Welcome to IC3D. Today we're going to be creating a beginner game in Unreal Engine 5. This is part one of a two-part series and uh, we'll be looking to create what you can see on the screen here today. The end goal is for us to shoot targets as fast as we can and try and beat our best scores. So let's jump into it. We have the Unreal Engine launcher here. Um, it is a part of the Epic Games launcher. Um, if you don't have this, you'll need to install it. So you can go to the Unreal Engine website and install it. Um, and if you don't have version 5 installed, you'll have to click on this little plus button and uh, you'll have the, the different versions you can install. I've already got 5 installed, so it's uh, not showing up for me. But once you have that installed, you can then click on launch. So once that's finished, it'll pop up with this screen and you'll either have recent projects, I've got a lot here, but what you'll want to do to start off is click on this game section and then the uh, game we're going to select is the first person shooter. Um, we're going to keep all the settings here default. So we're going to use blueprints. Uh, the target platform is desktop. Quality preset is maximum. If you're running a, um, a lower end computer, you can change this to scalable, but uh, maximum should be fine as the game we're doing will be quite uh, friendly on your PC. So uh, the next thing you want to do is just give your project a name. I'm just going to call this my beginner project and I'm going to say create. So once you click on create, a, a splash screen will start loading and once that's done, you'll, you'll get this screen. Um, and so here is basically a first person template with some basic functions. I'm just going to minimize some of these outliner items. So in here, you'll see a uh, first person template. If you press play, you'll get some a nice little first person view with a gun and a hand holding it, and you can even shoot some projectiles. So that's pretty cool, but uh, for us, this is not exactly what we want. So let's press escape, and that'll take us out of it. So the point of this game is we're going to set up some targets. We're going to change the bullet from that yellow ball to a red laser gun. We're going to disable the physics, we're going to add in some particle effects for an impact, and we're also going to put in a timer and a counter. And the aim of the game would be to, to see how fast we can kill all the targets. So this will be part one, and then in part two we'll finish off. So let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is change up the uh, projectile settings. So let's press control and space. This will bring up our content draw. Um, I'm going to jump into the first person BP and I'm going to jump into blueprints and I'm going to jump into first person character. Okay, so in this BP, this is the uh, blueprint which is spawning that yellow ball we first saw. Now we're not going to make any changes in here but I think it's worth explaining uh, how this functions. So I'm going to zoom into this portion of the blueprint and we have input action fire. So this input action is defined by the input manager. So as we as it says here, input action fire, if we jump into edit project settings. So when we come into the project settings, we can scroll down the left on the side here and click on input. And we have a bunch of action and mappings here. And one of these is called fire. So this is that uh, red fire event that we saw in the blueprint. So I'm just going to close this off. So this is um, mapped to the left uh, mouse key as we saw in the input manager. When that's pressed, we do an, an uh, we do a montage play, which is the recoil of the action, and then we spawn that projectile. Now, if we close this, um, but before we close that, um, it's worth noting that there is there are other a, there are other inputs. So input touch, this is for the if you are using mobile. Um, and then there's also a uh, input here or some blueprint nodes to handle um, your your VR if you're using the, uh, a VR headset. So there's a lot of inputs here to, to help uh, maintain this, but we're only interested in this one here because that's what we're doing. We're targeting this for uh, the desktop, which is keyboard and mouse. So I'm going to close this, and what we're going to do is uh, control space again, and I'm going to go into the first person projectile. Now in here, there is a um, event called event hit. So right now, 
uh, whenever there is a collision, and the collision is defined um, in the in the in the um, component. So on this collision component, we can define the collisions on the right hand side in the details. So if we uh, look on here, we have collision preset. So this is set to a custom uh, collision preset. So if we expand that arrow, we can see how the uh, collisions are set to interact with each other. So um, we have a column here called block and basically anything that's in this sort of category, um, this is what will happen. So we've got a lot of blocks and it'll ignore any pawns and, uh, at the moment. So um, that's a, a quick way of uh, looking at the collisions. Um, what we can do then is, um, and, and so what will happen in this case is once it hits, it's gonna go here. It's gonna come over this branch and say, is it simulating physics, um, which is the component that it hits? It's going to say, if it's true, yes, then add an impulse at the location, which is a physics action. So this is going to add some physics and the impulse amount and the location is defined by these nodes here. And then after, after that's done, the uh, projectile is going to destroy itself because we don't want it to be hanging around for too long. So that's all good. Um, we do want to change this because we don't actually want any physics. But to demonstrate how this works, in case you wanted to have physics on your on your projectiles, um, what we're going to do is um, come over to this projectile component. So this is uh, something that you would. This is a projectile you would add to your blueprint. So what we would do here is incre increase the initial speed. So here we've got, it's currently set to 3000. I'm just gonna add an extra zero to make that 30,000 and make the max 30,000 as well. So that will come out. And then what we can also do is when it gets to the velocity, so this is gonna come out at 30,000, 30, it's going to then um, take that 30,000 and multiply it by 100. And that's the amount of the impulse it's gonna give. So. Um, if we were to compile this, minimize and press play, we now got this extremely fast gun and look at that, it is just pushing everything out. So you can just kill things and make them go super crazy far if you wanted to. But that's not the aim of this game. So what we're going to do is jump back into that. And what we're going to do is reduce this. So we do want a projectile speed. We just don't want it to have a uh, an impulse physics. So I'm going to put this down to 20,000 because I find that's kind of like a good speed for a laser. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold Alt, click on the uh, arrow here, and that's going to disconnect the event hit. I'm going to bring this up here and I'm also going to alt and click on this. So that's also going to disconnect that. So I'm just going to leave this here for reference. I'm going to click on this destroy actor, control C, control V. And I'm going to bring that up here and on event hit, all I'm going to do is simply go to destroy actor. Now we're going to make some more adjustments to this later on, but it's just good to um, uh, show what this is going to do. So I'm going to compile this and I'm going to close that press play and now you'll see once it hits it just destroys the actor and there's no longer any physics being applied to the objects okay so that's good but now we still have a round yellow ball and what we actually want is a laser so how are we going to achieve that so what we're going to do is we're going to press control space again and we're going to jump back into this uh, projectile and we're gonna click on the viewport here. So this viewport is kind of like the, the graphical component of the blueprint. So any meshes and component uh, collision spheres that you put in here and anything like that will show up in this viewport and this will give you your, I guess it's your visualizer, visualization of the blueprint. So what we're gonna do here now is we're going to click on the collision component and we're going to add another collision component but this time we're going to add the box collision so type in col for collision and then select the box collision i'm just going to leave it named box and then uh, what i'm going to do is click on the collision component here and i'm just going to delete that because uh, i don't need that shape anymore and i'm going to select the box and make it the parent of the sphere 
now we're going to have this shape and we're just going to want to adjust this a bit. So I'm going to now click on the sphere and I'm just going to adjust these uh, settings on the scale transform a little bit. So I'm going to make this 0.7 and the Y is 0 0.0115 and the same for the Z, which is 0 0.015. On the box, I'm gonna select the box collision and I'm gonna make this to about 105 and make this one and make this one as well. So now we have a box collision, which is around this shape. If you're finding that it's not quite long enough uh, like that, then you can just simply drag this out a little bit to make it longer and you should have a nice uh, box collision. Now I'm going to compile that and and I'm just going to minimize this and we're going to press play again. So now you have something that is firing out very long but clearly doesn't look anything like a laser. So what we're going to do is jump back into our blueprint. So we're going to press control space and we're going to go into uh, the content folder. I'm just going to make a new folder and call it materials. Okay. In here, we're going to double click on materials to go into that folder. And I'm going to go and click, uh, do a right click and go to materials and textures and click on a new material. Okay, and I'm going to call this one uh, M underscore laser, M for, for material. I'm going to double click on this to open it up and it'll take us here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a uh, color parameter. So I'm going to right click and type uh, vector parameter and I'm just going to call this color and then you can choose a color in here. So double click on the black space. Um, and I'm just going to make this a bright red. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is add an A constant. So right click and type constant. And I'm going to give that a constant of 40. I'm going to click on this node and drag it out and I'm going to type in multiply. Okay, and then I'm going to take this top node here and drag it into B, um, and this is going to multiply it together, and I'm going to drag this into the emissive color. So once that um, finishes calculating, you're going to get this nice bright orangey red. Um, so from here, you can adjust the color um, for whatever sort of color laser you want. I'm going to use red, but it's up to you. So I'm just going to adjust this slightly until I get something I like. So very basic material here, um, but it's going to achieve what we want. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to close it. So back in the first person projectile blueprint, I'm going to select our sphere and where it says material, I'm going to click on the down arrow and I'm going to do a search for that material we just made. So M underscore laser and I'm going to select it. Now we've got this nice bright orange uh, ready laser beam. And one last thing, uh, we also have to reset the collisions uh, from the original collision um, component. So what we're going to do is make sure we have the box collision selected change the collision preset to custom. And what we're going to do is just click on the block everything. And then under ignore, we're just going to change that uh, pawn to ignore. And we're just going to save and compile. And I'm going to close it. Now what I'm going to do is press play. And now when we fire, we have something that looks better as a laser. It's not very convincing because when we shoot, nothing happens at the other end. It is detecting it, but uh, all that happens is it just disappears. Press control space again to bring up the content drawer. And we're gonna go into the content folder and we're going to right click and create a new folder and call this FX. 
fx. Jump into here, right click, and we're going to go to the fx section and create a new Niagara system. Um, and what we're going to do is go new system from select emitters, click next, and we're going to choose a directional burst, click plus and finish. For the name, we're going to call this ns underscore impact. So now we're just going to double click to open it up and we're just going to change a couple of settings. So you'll get an initial preview on this left hand side of what the, uh, the directional burst looks like. Um, if you hold down your left mouse button, you can rotate around it until you get a better view. Now, this is a good starting point, but it's obviously going for way too long and it's going way too far. So what we're going to do is click on the uh, initial particle size over here, and we're going to change the lifetime min to 0.3 and the lifetime max to 0.6. And what that's going to do is just... Um, make that uh, not burst quite as much. And we're just going to change the color to match our laser. Again, play around with it to get something you like. Okay, so we got this red little uh, burst at the moment. Now I just want to make this a bit more wider. So to do that, I'm going to click on the add velocity and cone section, and I'm just going to change the cone angle from 48 to 100. And all that's going to do is make it just a bit wider and a bit more nicer. So this is very basic Niagara system, but it's uh, going to demonstrate what we want. So I'm going to click on save and it's already compiled. So I'm just going to close this window. So once we've finished uh, making the Niagara system, we're going to jump back into the first person BP, into the blueprints and back into the first person projector. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate that Niagara system impact. So we're just going to alt click on here to remove that. And what we're going to do then is right click in the center here and type in spawn system. And under Niagara, we'll see a spawn system at location, which is what we want to use. And I'm just going to rearrange this to make it look a bit better. And then from this exit node here, we're going to connect this up and we're going to connect this up as well. So under the system template, we are going to click on that and select the impact uh, Niagara system we just created. And what we need to do is set some settings here. So under the location, what we want to do is um, reference the hit location. So where the event hit is, this is where we want to spawn the impact uh, graphic or the impact Niagara system. but we also have another problem is that which way do we rotate it? Which way do we let the burst project out of? So what we want to do is use the normal of the event hit. So this is this event normal and we want to plug it into the rotation. And what it's going to do here is it's just going to do an automatic conversion for us to make it nice and easy. And what that'll do is uh, burst out the Niagara system uh, to the perpendicular of the face, which is the normal. So. Uh, and that's all we want to do here. And that this will make a very simple um, impact effect for us. So I'm going to save and compile. Hit play. And now when we fire, you'll see that we get a nice explosion at the point of impact. So that'll end part one. Part two, we'll uh, look at adding some targets and some UI elements to add in a timer and counter for uh, some more extra game components. Until next time, guys, hit subscribe and click the bell notification. I'll see you next time.